and uh, happy holidays. I can't recall uh, the last meeting I started with uh, Frosty the Snowman playing in the background, but I got to say I like it. Um, so um, this is the seventh meeting of this committee. It's hard to believe. Our, it's been four months since our last meeting in August. Uh, and as I've said, I guess, six times before, uh, all of our uh, working groups have made extraordinary progress. This has been about the smoothest uh, work preparatory process that I can recall. And we are in the final stages of our work. Uh, a year from now, the work will have been over, uh, which is hard to imagine. Um, so let's start with the easy stuff. Um, with the approval of the agenda, which is document WAC 96. If you haven't looked at it, would you take just a moment to look at it now? Do we have any comments on today's agenda? Seeing none, uh, that agenda is uh, deemed approved. Next bit of uh, administrative work. Uh, can we take a look at the minutes of our sixth meeting? which is WAC 93. Does anyone have any comments on the minutes of our last meeting? Hearing none, uh, we will deem those minutes approved. And with that, I will turn the meeting over to the vice chair of uh, our committee, Jennifer Manor. Good morning, everyone, and happy holidays as well. Um, as Scott said, this has been a, a very smooth running work process, and we thank everyone on the committee for that. Um, in terms of our federal colleagues, they're also at the federal agencies are also making significant um, progress in preparation for the conference. In the interim, since our last meeting, the FCC has received additional inputs from NTIA that are provided for consideration by this committee under item four of our agenda. The relevant IWGs have been actively considering these inputs, and I'd like to recognize Brian Patton, who's acting RCS vice chair, and ask him if he'd be willing to update us. Please, thank you. All right. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair, and good morning, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Brian Patton. I'm with NTIA, and I'm serving as the acting vice chair of the RCS. Um, I am happy to report to this committee that NTIA, since the last meeting of the WRC 15 Advisory Committee, we have continued to consider, uh, consider federal agency input towards the development of U.S. proposals towards WRC 15. These proposals have been forwarded to the uh, FCC for consideration and review by its uh, WRC 15 Advisory Committee. And with the Vice Chair's permission, I would propose to go through each of the proposals and briefly summarize what is being proposed. That would be great. Thank you. All right. So in WAC Document 94, we have three proposals for Agenda Items 1.3, 1.5, and a proposal for um, action under Agenda Item 9. Um, for Agenda Item 1.3, which is for public protection and disaster relief, uh, NTIA proposes to review and revise Resolution 646 as a solution to that agenda item. For Agenda Item 1.5, which is unmanned aircraft systems, NTIA proposes allowing the use of control and non-payload communication links in the fixed satellite service. For Agenda Item 9, which is to consider and approve the report of the Director of the Radio Communication Bureau, NTIA proposes providing more spectrum in both the uplink and downlink in the fixed satellite service to support the growing global broadband communications requirements. Under WAC Document 95, we have one proposal. It falls under Agenda Item 9.1 on activities of the radio communication sector since WRC 12. This will be Issue 8, so it's 9.1.8. Regulatory aspects for nano and pico satellites. For this proposal, NTIA proposes that a future conference agenda item devoted to this topic is not needed and proposes instead a modification to Resolution 808 to make this a topic under the WRC 19 standing agenda item for satellite networks. 
under WAC document 97, we have three proposals for agenda item 1.9.1, a proposal under agenda item 7, and another proposal under agenda item 9.1. For 1.9.1, this is the fixed satellite service uplink downlink in the 7 to 8 gigahertz range. NTIA proposes no change to Article 5 of the radio regulations for the 7150 to 7250 megahertz and 8400 to 8500 megahertz bands. For agenda item 7, which is satellite network regulatory issues, for issue E, failure of a satellite during the 90-day bringing into use period, NTIA proposes no change to Article 11 of the radio regulations. Under agenda item 9.1, which is again on the activities of the radio communication sector since WRC 12, issue 9.1.2, which is coordination arc reduction, uh, this is a rather lengthy proposal but um, NTIA proposes changes to the radio regulations in Appendix 5 to address the coordination arc for the C and KU frequency bands, while also proposing no change to the radio regulations in Appendix 5 for the coordination arc for the KA frequency band. In addition, NTIA proposes no change to the radio regulations Article 9, Article 11, and Appendix 8 in addressing the current criterion the delta T over T greater than 6% used in the application of the radio regulations numbers 9.41. And finally, in WAC document 98, we have under agenda item 10, which is future conference agenda items, NTIA proposes an agenda item under resolution 808 for WRC 19 to study the coordination distance between stations of the Space Research Service and mobile aircraft stations in the 2200 to 2290 megahertz band and to possibly modify table 10 of Annex 7 of Appendix 7 of the radio regulations as appropriate. And to conclude, Madam Vice Chair, I will note that for all of these proposals, Mr. Charles Glass of NTIA is the primary contact. And I will finally note that the next Iraq RCS meeting will be held on January 8, 2015. Thank you very much, Brian. Okay, let's turn to uh, our working groups. Uh, can I call up uh, to the podium the vice chair of IWG1, Chris Hutchinson? Good morning, everyone. Uh, IWG1 has met once since uh, the last WAC meeting in August, and uh, we have been reviewing um, at least at our last meeting last week, we reviewed uh, WAC document 098, dealing with agenda item 10 that uh, was just mentioned. We reviewed the proposal and we edited uh, that proposal, and you can find the consensus version in WAC 103. And with that introduction, I'd like to present that for approval. Very good. Uh, do we have any comments about uh, document uh, WAC 103? Seeing none, that document is deemed approved. And as far as the next meeting, we haven't set a date yet, but uh, we're going to continue to work as uh, we get documents to review. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, just um, a note on IWG2. Um, the IWG2, IWG2 lead couldn't attend today's meeting, um, so we're inviting today FCC coordinator for IWG2, Dante Ibarra, to report on the progress of the group. So Dante, would you join us? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jennifer, and good morning to everyone. Um, I'll briefly go through the IWG2 report. Uh, IWG2 met twice uh, since the last uh, WAC meeting. They also had a number of offline uh, discussions to address uh, uh, several issues under agenda items 1.1 and 1.3. So for today's uh, report, I have two documents to present to the WAC under agenda item dot one and one dot three. The first document is WAC document number 99, which ad addresses WRC 15 agenda item one dot one with respect to the 3400 to 4200 megahertz band and the 4500 to 4800 megahertz band. 
IWG2 members were not able to reach a consensus on a single proposal. Therefore, IWG2 presents WAC 99 with two views on how the FCC should handle this matter. So there are two views with WAC 99. I'll, I'll briefly go through each of the views. View A, which is supported by 21 cent, 21, 21st Century Fox, ARRL, Aviation Spectrum Resources Incorporated, CBS Incorporated, Echo Star, Inmarsat, Intelsat, Lockheed Martin, the National Association of Broadcasters, New Wave Spectrum Partners, the Satellite Industry Association, SES Americom, the Boeing Corporation, Time Warner, and Viacom Incorporated, uh, proposes no changes to the bands that I mentioned, the 3400 to 4200 megahertz and the 4500 to 48 megahertz frequency bands. The second view, view B, proposes that the U.S. identify the 3400 to 3800 megahertz band for IMT with corresponding co-primary allocations to the mobile services as appropriate under this agenda item. View B is supported by Alcatel Lucent, AT&T, Ericsson, GSMA, Intel Corporation, Motorola Mobility, Nokia Solutions and Networks, Samsung, Sprint Corporation, Telecommunications Management Group, and Verizon. View B did not address the 4500 to 4800 megahertz band and these View B proponents are not in a position at this time to make a recommendation on this band. Uh, with that report, I, I uh, turn this uh, WAC 99 over to you, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, are there any comments on this document? Hearing none, we'll declare WAC 099 approved. Thank you. The second document we have for today from IWG2 addresses agenda item 1.3, which is to review and revise resolution 646 for broadband PPDR, public protection disaster relief. This document is WAC 100. Um, and in this document, the key objectives for any revision to resolution 646 are the promotion of harmonization through the establishment of core common ranges for public protection and disaster relief and to enable flexibility by facilitating the smooth adoption of advanced technologies for public protection and disaster relief. IWG2 proposal encourages the use of global and regionally harmonized bands by including these core ranges in the revision of resolution 646 without specific designations for administrations and also promotes the adoption of more common frequency arrangements for public protection and disaster relief as well as technologies through the incorporation into recommendation ITUR M2015. It should be also noted that IWG2 did consider document WAC 94 from NTIA on agenda item 1.3. However, IWG has chosen to advocate the proposal in WAC 100. And with that, I turn this document over for consideration, Madam Chair. Thank you, Dante. With that, are there any comments on WAC 100? Hearing none, the document will be approved. Thank you. And IWG has not scheduled any meetings at this time for, for, uh, for future uh, issues. And this concludes my report for IWG2. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Dante. Let's turn now to IWG3 Space Services. And I'd like to invite the chair of that working group, Jack Wengrenick, uh, to come and report on their progress. Okay, so good morning. Less and less people here every time. So uh, either people are losing interest or, uh, I don't know, we've done such a good They're job. They're all Christmas parties is... or holiday parties. Uh, or there, you there you go. They're drinking already. <laughs> okay, so uh, I don't remember, and I didn't count beforehand, how many meetings IWG3 has held. I think it was two or three uh, since the last WAC meeting. And at this meeting, we have one, uh, one document to offer to the, uh, to the committee. That's document WAC 101 on agenda item 1.12. So for those of you who are paying attention, you may say, but we already did 1.12 in IWG3. Well, as you know, it's not over until the conference is over, right? So a little bit of history. Uh, at the 11th and 12th meetings of IWG3, so this was in December of last year and January of this year, we considered a, an NTIA proposal on this agenda item 1.12. 
which uh, proposed an additional primary allocation of 600 megahertz to the EESS in the 9.9 to 10.5 gigahertz range. As a consequence of IWG3's deliberations, and that, that document is WAC uh, 059. As a consequence of the discussions in IWG3, we brought to the WAC a document WAC 073, which was a red line version of uh, WAC 059. And that was at the, uh, the meeting in January, the WAC meeting in January, the fifth one. And uh, it was approved at that meeting, went on public notice, and uh, there were no comments, and uh, one supportive comment, no negative comments, and that was the state of play at that point. Then at our 13th meeting in June, there was uh, a proposal brought by Mimosa to our meeting to essentially reopen the issue. And that was prompted by a petition for rulemaking that Mimosa filed with the commission to open up the uh, 10 to 10.45 gigahertz band for fixed service. So that prompted the group to start discussing the possibility of revising the, um, what we had previously agreed. And that led to some, uh, some uh, non-consensus uh, uh, positions. And we s essentially couldn't resolve those non-consensus positions, unfortunately. So what you see in document uh, 101 are essentially two views. Uh, view A, which is essentially uh, advocating that uh, our, the previous IWG3 uh, red line version should stand uh, as is without change. And then a view B that, uh, as you can read, is advocating that um, some changes be made to that position, or to that proposal, essentially to uh, add the name of the United States to footnote 5.480. Uh, and you can see uh, in the document the, the exact proposal that's being made. So unfortunately, with that, I offer this non-consensus document uh, to the committee. All right. Thank you, Jack. Comments? It's great when we don't even have comments on the non-consensus documents. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, there okay. were plenty of them in the meeting. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, seeing and hearing no comments, uh, we will deem this uh, document, uh, WAC 101, uh, approved. Okay. And then as for additional comments on documents received from NTIA, uh, you can see in document uh, WAC 094, there was a draft proposal, NTIA proposal, on agenda item 1.5. Uh, however, that proposal arrived in IWG3 after a reconciled proposal on 1.5 had already gone to CTEL. And so, quite frankly, we really didn't consider the NTIA proposal because we support the <coughs> reconciled proposal that went to CTEL. And then finally, in the WAC document 097, you see a draft proposal from NTIA on agenda item 1.9.1. We did consider that in the IWG3, and uh, I can report that uh, IWG3 supports and agrees with the proposal in, uh, in under that agenda item in WAC 097. Great. Thank you, Jack. All right. Thank you. I saw you sneak in the back, Damon. <laughs> And with that, we're going to turn to IWG4, regulatory issues, and I'd like to invite the chair up, um, Steve Baruch, to report on the progress of this group. Well, thank you. Good morning. Um, IWG4, I did count our meetings, and we had two since our last WAC meeting. Um, what we have... Good that we can count to two. Yes. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's the voice of experience. Um, we have one document for you this morning and several comments. The document is in WAC 102. And here, IWG4 makes a very important one-word suggestion on the NTIA proposal for Agenda Item 7, Issue E, from document WAC 097 that was introduced earlier by Mr. Patton. And you'll see that change in red line in the first page of the document in the background section. So we think that that would be an improvement to the understandability of the document. And so we offer that one proposal to you for consideration. Thanks, Steve. Um, with that, I'd like to... Are there, oh, okay. Are there any comments on WAC 102? Hearing none, then the document will be approved. Thank you. Thank you. And so... in. in under the point of additional comments on documents received from NTIA, we have three comments. 
the first is that IWG4 has authorized me to inform the committee that it has approved the NTIA proposal in WAC 097 for issue 9.1.2 on the coordination arc subject. So there are some proposals for reductions of the coordination arc in C and KU band, no change to the coordination arc in KA band, and no change to the criteria and methodology for determining um, the coordination separation distances. So we offer that approval to you. Um, the next point, and this is similar to, to the point Jack made for IWG3, there is a proposal that came to us after the CTEL meeting in September, and this was a proposal in document WAC 94 for agenda item 9 on earth stations on mobile platforms. And we had brought a proposal to you in August, and that proposal became a reconciled U.S. proposal that was taken to CTEL. So this was noted in IWG 4 with no further action required. And then finally, um, and this regards document WAC 95, and there's a proposal in there that was introduced for agenda item 9.1.8. In August, we had approved a proposal out of IWG4 to this committee for issue 9.1.8, um, and that's the nano and pico satellite issue, and brought that to you. So we have not taken that back up again in IWG4 since we've already expressed an opinion that is effectively similar, if not identical, to the opinion expressed in WAC 95. So we could take that up again, but we'll look into the status of whether that actually became a U.S. proposal to CETA. I just don't recall whether that was a reconciled proposal for that meeting or not. And if we need to take it up again, we will do so. But we already voiced our opinion on that issue. That concludes my report. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. Okay. Um, future meetings. Um, note that the timeline, the updated timeline for the committee's work is available in document WAC 04. Um, and the eighth and presumably final meeting of our committee is tentatively scheduled for May 20th uh, of next year, lest anyone think we are meeting too often. Uh, five months from now should be plenty of time to wrap everything up. Um, With that, do we have any other business? Seeing and hearing no comments, uh, we'll declare this meeting closed, and I wish you all a wonderful holiday season. Thank you so much for all of your hard work.